Today we're going to look at the most man expensive blue MTG cards in Magic the Gathering. It's got to be 7 CMC plus or the 7 mana value or higher. And let me tell you, I looked at the list and blue is absolutely broken. I mean, they know how to make 7 mana spells uh not really feel like seven mana spells let's just say that starting off with sailor's bane the blue blue seven generic it's nine mana how the hell would you ever cast this thing for a seven seven dragon turtle the turtles are got their turtles are coming back people there's not just teenage mutant ninja turtles there's also just ancient dragon turtles just waiting at the deep it costs one less to cast for each card you own in exile and in your graveyard. That's an instant card. A sorcery card, or that's an adventure for some reason, as if that matters in the first place. But here's the deal. It's got Ward 4. So if you try to sp cast some spell against it, you're probably not going to pay for it because who the hell has four mana to pay after they've already cast their uh, instant or sorcery to target the damn thing. That basically makes a true name nemesis. Uh, yeah, so... It looks like nine mana, but if you ever played against a blue deck and you know, they got things called counter spells and cantrips and, and time walks, they all add up. And so in the end, you're only gonna pay two mana for this seven seven that you can't even touch. You just, just, you'll do absolutely nothing. All right, we, let's start off with Islarf with uh, Slin Voda. It sounds like some sort of soda that I can buy at a vending machine slin voda the risen deep the blue blue six generic eight eight leviathan with a kicker so this kid that's funny this card is so expensive oh by the way it can get even more expensive when slim voda the risen deep enters the battlefield if it was kicked return all creatures to their owner's hand ex except now get oh, wow merfolk krakens leviathans octopuses and serpents in the past it was always those, uh, though. It was always Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents, but not Merfolk. Now they're saying we can keep the Merfolk around. I love it. <laughs> we get to keep the Merfolk around. Wizards of the Coast admits that the Merfolk can swim. I think this card actually is pretty good. It's like, uh, so it's like Cyclonic Rift, right? Was Cyclonic Rift like seven? So this is eight. This is like Cyclonic Rift on a creature, effectively. Will the real Slin Voda please stand up? I think there's only one Slin Voda. If it was kicked, return all creatures. Yeah, but our creatures. Hopefully, we're playing with all the Leviathans, the Krakens, and all that other stuff. Uh, okay, Ashen wants to get Memnarch on here. Memnarchs. Uh, that's an artifact. Thank you for playing. The Cyclonic Rift count. No, it's a kicker. No overloads, no cheatsies. PM with Brood Star. Come on, this is this is not complicated. We've had more complicated shows than this. Okay, we got a blue, blue, a generic star, star beast. Affinity for artifacts. It's a, it's it's like pretending to be an artifact for some reason. Flying Brood Star's power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts you control. It pretended the entire way. This card. Does it suck? Maybe not. Maybe it's okay. If you're in an artifact deck, like it's not bad. I don't know if it's good. If like I don't know if this is the art if I don't know this doesn't really feel like an artifact payoff, but maybe it is. Maybe it's like cranial plating on a creature. So why didn't they just play this the entire time? I don't get it. like you know what? It's okay. Uh, I don't think it's terrible, but I don't know if it's great. But it feel it feels like cranial plating on a creature. So it's like sort of a payoff if you have enough artifacts in play. I just feel like you have a lot of artifacts in play. You might as well play something else. Also, this might be even expensive even for like an affinity creature. Mommy! Mommy's here. Mommy Dova. Uh, ex expropriate. Uh, absolutely busted. Blue, blue, seven generic sorcery. Council's dilemma. Sorry with you. Each player votes for time or money. Both are very good, by the way. For each time vote, take an extra turn after this one. For each money vote, choose a permanent owned by the voter and gain control of it. Isn't it just, like, correct to just let them take one of your stuff? Like, as if it's a blatant thievery? Like, giving them an extra turn. That's like a whole extra nine mana. That's absolutely broken. Lone Wolf! Cura bests the sea gods? One Cura bests the sea gods. 
Oh, th this is that weird or uh, saga. Blue, blue, five generic. Chapter one, you get an eight, eight blue Kraken creature token with hex proof. Uh, chapter two, tap all non-land permanents, target opponent controls. They don't untap during the controller's next untap step. Just a non-land permanent, so you get your lands, so don't complain. And then chapter three, gain control of target permanent and opponent controls, untap it. Honestly, a little underwhelming for seven mana. I would say this card is better than like, you know, what green, white, black in general get for seven mana, but... For blue, it's actually on the low side. We could do more busted things for seven man, in my opinion. Lugagar with Archi... Archipelagor? Archipelagor? I don't even know what the hell that is. We got blue, blue, five generic. Another Leviathan. There's going to be a lot of Leviathans on this show. They saved the big mana cost for the big creatures. It's a seven, seven. It's got mutate. Blue, five generic. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, tap up to X target creatures. Where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Sounds unplayable. I shouldn't use that. That's like a wrong. Use this one. Doesn't sound that good. Like, I don't want to spend six mana tap one thing. I gotta sp spend six mana tap another. I uh, Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. I never heard of this card until today, so... I think I'm right. Not worth it. Oh, we got uh, Platonic Liquid. It's Bringer time. Bringer of the Blue Dawn. You're a Bringer fan, aren't you? Bringer of the Blue... There's a lot of Bringer. <laughs> bringer of the Blue Dawn. Of the Bringer. Is there... Is How many Bringers are there? I think I've asked that question before. Blue, blue, seven generic for a five, five. You can pay Wooburg rather than pay Bringer of the Blue Dawn's mana cost. Okay. Uh, trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may draw two cards. Whoa! Get out of here! To begin my upkeep, so I draw three cards. This is a and it's a five mana card. This is like a it does. I'm not certain, but isn't this like an instant staple in any like five mana deck? Just throw, throw that thing in there. Bringer of the Blue Dawn. It's like $6. I think it's worth more. Someone's got to raise the stock of the Bringer of the Blue Dawn. Or most people just don't even know this exists. I mean, I can't play this because I don't play like a Wooburg deck. So I'm a little jealous. Are, are gold cards allowed now? No. No gold cards. I'm going to disqualify. Uh, you can submit gold cards if you super chat though. I won't say no to the super chatters. Nicholas! Jingataxius! Which one? There's many Jingataxius. Progress! Yeah, that's... As everyone says, Progress Tyrant. Alright, we got a blue, blue, five generic, five, five, Phyrexian Praetor. Whenever you cast an artifact, instant, sorcery, spell, you copy it. You get two copies. Uh, you may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. So you only get one... So, like, you double your brainstorms, your counter spells, if that matters at all. Whenever an opponent casts an artifact instant or sorcery spell, counter that spell. This ability only triggers once each time. Wow, this reminds me of, uh, uh, what, what is that banned blue legendary creature? That if you play four spells, you flip it, and everyone's, like, first spell gets countered. It reminds me of this. It doesn't hit the creatures, though. But it hits the combo players, and that's what counts. That's what counts even more. Areo is what I was thinking about. Areo. Reminds me of Areo. It's not, this card's not bad. It's pretty good. It's tough. Like, these these blue creatures at, like, 7 plus mana, they're, like, they're not bad. They could be a whole lot worse, that's for sure. Zack! Omniscience. Also human tier list soon. Uh, did we ever do one? Maybe we didn't. Maybe we'll get around to that. <laughs> a very human tier list we'll make one day. Uh, omniscience, play whatever for what's ever in your hand. It costs 10 mana. The weird thing is, nobody casts this card. Like, I don't understand the point of Omniscience. Okay, is Omniscience good? Yes. It's broken as hell. But, like, nobody casts this card. It's cheated in play, like, through many different ways. Either you, get, you swap an enchantment into play, you plop it onto your hands for show and tell or something. Because if you have 10 mana, then... You can cast whatever you want to cast. 
The simple as that. Anyway, so it's like a, sort of an oxymoron type of card. You cheat this, so you can cheat the rest of your hand into play. But that's how it is. That's how it is in uh, Magic the Gathering. Omniscience. Very, very, very good card. Pyrobob. Astral Dragon. The, there'll be dragons in these waters. Blue, blue, six generic for a 4-4 dragon with flying. It's got project image. It's projecting something. I'm trying to assert dominance here. Uh, when Astral Dragon enters the battlefield, create two tokens that are copies of target non-creature permanent. Uh, except they're 3-3 three, three dragon creatures in addition to their other types and have flying. So we create two tokens that are copies of target non-creature permanent. So you're not copying creature. You, like, you're copying soul ring. So you, got, you have like 3-3 three, three dragon soul rings. Oristic studies. Or something. Anyway, um... Seems a bit underwhelming, to be honest. I don't know. It's t too janky for eight mana. Not worth it. Okay, next super chat. We got Dizzy Blizzy Stormtide Leviathan. I I think this card's great. This definitely is a casual level card. I play it myself because uh it's eight mana for an eight eight but get, get, get this it's got island walk but all lands are islands in addition to their other types all lands your lands are now islands i brought the island if, if you don't I'm trying to create some sort of saying here whatever the storm tide is going to break it's going to bring the water and then creatures without flying or island walk can't attack so it's like a moat it's like a moat on a creature, and it's enormous. How can you say no to this damn thing? I think it's uh, I think it's genius. Definitely worth it. Like, when you play this thing, the game might just not move forward until it's dead. That's how powerful it is. Always a bigger fish. <laughs> that picture is so beautiful to me. I, I, I guess because of your uh, your name. There always is a bigger fish. Then, but what's bigger than this guy's fish? Uh, what do we got? Christopher B. Thundercloud Elemental. Okay, blue, blue, five generic elemental. It's a three, four, flying, four mana. Tap all creatures with toughness two or less. Pay four. All other creatures lose flying until end of turn. The first ability is like, okay. The second ability is stone cold useless. I guess it's just some way to get some evasion. I really don't like spending more mana. No, that sucks. This is crap. Not worth it. Because like someone declares their attacks. Like what are you going to pay for mana and screw them over? And you like it and, and commander like then you were you gonna you're not gonna have that four mana for the next person and it does he still doesn't even deal with the big creatures what are you do about the big creatures ashen memnarch's color identity is blue you're coming back to me huh memnarch uh plus the abilities are only reason to cast it and also uh add to seven to use it consistently Look, commander rules don't apply here, Ashen. This is an artifact, damn it. It's not a blue creature. It's it's color identity is blue, but it is not blue. It needs to say, hold on. Okay, let, let me show you. Ancestral vision. Uh, Where's the original ancestral vision? There we go. Ancestral vision is blue. That's what it needs to say to convince me. I'm eating the super chat. Don't worry, we'll have, we'll have an artifact show. You can, you, we'll have Memnarch as the poster child of that show. But uh, for this one, no, this is, this is artifact. Artifact, not blue creature. Jacob says it's blue. What am I getting voted out here? There's, uh, there's must, the, the, the Memnarch fam. There's a bunch of Memnarch stands out there. All right, let's go look at Jess's mass manipulation. Does that count? Mass manip, uh... That does not count at all. Even if X is one, it's not even seven mana. Seagate restoration. That actually works. Seagate restoration. All right, seven mana. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand plus one. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. I can't. I think this card is okay, uh, only because it's a land. I don't know where you would use this exactly. Um, 
So, but like the worst case is it's a land, which is nice. So late in the game, when you draw this card and you have like, I don't know, two random cards in your hand, you have like, you know, eight, nine, ten mana. All right, why not cast like the, the Seagate Restoration? I think this is, e it's too easy to play. I think it's worth it. It's like a bit of a cheatsy card because it's actually a land, but, uh, or whatever. Approach decks might play it. Approach, oh, you mean approach of the sec, uh, approach of the second sun? Okay, moving on, we got Trunic. Uh, Trunic, what do you got? Oh, no, wait a minute. No, no, we'll just move on with the Super Chats. Fine, take my Toonie and go Emergent Ultimatum. Aha, you're cheating! Remember, Super Chats can vote green. I mean, sorry, vote gold. Blue, blue, green, 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 black, black. Search your library for up to three monocolor cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of them. Choose that, uh, shuffle that card into your library. You may cast the other cards without paying their mana. Oh, you get to cast both of them? Absolutely broken. Uh, definitely worth it. Because like, what you're doing, you're just spending seven mana to cast two spells. And what, like, for three... It doesn't even say how expensive they have to be. You could go get, like, a total mana value of 30 if you really wanted to. You could get a bunch of these other spells that we've talked about today. Like one of them, one of them gets one of them gets shuffled in. The other two get cast, and it's brutal. Crab tribe thought monitor. Look what look what seven mana get. I mean, blue is the genius at cheating on mana. They do not pay their mana. Blue six generic for a two two. But guess guess what? It's affinity for artifacts. So it's gonna be. It's just gonna be one. I've never I've never seen someone pay more than one mana for a thought monitor. It's got flying, enters the battlefield, draw two cards. You essentially it's a three for zero. Slam this thing down, you have a two two flyer, comes into play, you draw two cards, you can blink this thing, you get more mana. Oh sorry, get more get more card draw. This card will draw you a lot of cards. Uh next super chat, let's look at Elfinerd's Progenit <laughs> Why? Progen, uh... Double Wooberg, 10-10, pro everything. If it be put in the graveyard from anywhere, remove it, reveal it, and shuffle it back into the owner's library. I think it's crap. I don't think this is worth it. I think if you're going to cheat anything in play, there's better cards to cheat in play. I think it's garbage. Even in Commander, what is that, a four-turn clock? You'll be dead before, like, you can finish one person off. Unless this is your Commander, which in that case, you can't even cheat in play. Complete garbage. In my opinion. No, who plays Progenitus in 2023? You let me know in the comments section if you or you know someone who still plays with Progenitus these days. Used to be the big baddie of Magic the Gathering, and now we've got things like Emrakul and all the other Eldrazi's. You know, when someone says Annihilator, that still strikes fear into everyone. But protection from everything, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay, Ashen has another card. Rowdy Research. Is it better not be another artifact here? <laughs> okay, that's an actual. Ooh, it's got a fairy on it. Okay, we got a blue six generic instant. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature that attacked this turn. Draw three cards. That's hard to cast. But it's instant. So, like, even if. So, there is a chance, like, even if you have, like, a billion mana, if you can just. Ca Hard cast this for seven mana and draw three cards. I like it actually. I think it's worth it. I think if you attack with enough creatures, you just pay anywhere between two and three, draw three cards. That's not bad. Not bad at all. And also, I, I do think it's realistic that late in the game, you just have a lot of mana open. You're, you know, hey, you're holding up your counter, so you're holding up your cyclonic rift, but then the moment doesn't come. Like, you know what? I don't need the cyclonic rift right, right now. Let's just get rowdy. Let's do a little bit of research and draw a few extra cards. Uh, blank with Enter the Infinite. You see, like, these... Look at this busted stuff Blue gets. And, and, and you know what? Like, at this point, they just might as well arbitrarily give it, like, uh, 20 mana. Enter the Infinite. Blue, 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 a generic. Sorcery. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your library. Then put a card from your hand on top of your library. You have no maximum hand size until your next turn. That's right. So you, you draw your deck. Draw deck, do whatever you want with it. Next turn, you can discard your cards. Don't have an idea, have all of them, says Niv Mizzet. Like these, these cards in blue are just insane. They're just, they're just crazy. 
And they, 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 and they might as well have made this 20 mana. Uh, Nate. Nate Nathan with Time Stretch. Another banger. Blue, blue, a generic sorcery. Target player takes two extra turns up to this one. And they, they, that's the deal. Uh, see, with a card like this... It like soaks up all your mana, but you don't care because you're gonna have two fresh turns after that. And if you spent, let's say, let's say you spent 10 mana, you're gonna have 20 mana worth of things to do for the next two following turns. Excellent card, definitely worth it. Uh, let's go, yo, little Ted with Grazath. That doesn't even sound like a blue card. Grazath. Blue it is. Blue, 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 six generic for a 9-9 nine, nine Leviathan with Defender? Why do I want to spend nine mana for Defender? Comes into play, you may search your library for any number of cards that have converted mana cost nine. Reveal them, put them into your hand. If you do shuffle your library, you could realistically refill your hand with a bunch of cantrips and counter spells. Four mana, Grazeth loses Defender until end of turn. That's not bad. You can transmute it for three. Hard for me to evaluate this card. Price is low. Is it low because it sucks, or is it low because nobody knows it exists? It's like... You search your library for any number of cards, like anything, with uh, that have converted mana cost 9. Oh, wait a minute! All the cards have to be 9? You may search your library for any number of cards that have converted mana cost 9. Okay, I need to go to the order. It's not, I thought it's total mana value of 9. You may search your library for any number of cards that have mana value 9. Oh, then that makes it, like, way, way crappier. Okay. I don't like it. Not worth it. I thought if it was, like, like you could get a 2, you could get a 3, you could get another 2, and then you get another 2, and that adds up to 9. But no, they all have to be 9. That's clunky as hell. It's got 1. Okay, the only benefit is you can transmute it. <laughs> Which is not the greatest, but whatever. It's okay, I guess. Uh, Toilet Duck, Jingataxius, Core Auger. The old one. Jingataxius, Core. Ta Taxius, Gintax. I, I don't know how to spell Jingataxius. This card, blue, blue, a generic for a 5 4 with flash at the beginning of your end step. Draw, <laughs> draw seven cards. This is like AI generated. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by seven. So they, they only have one. This card's beyond bonkers. Absolutely worth it. You can cheat this and play. The game's over. This is like, this is like, just like a, it's almost like a thing that you would reanimate, but only to like, I don't know, screw around with your opponent. You could kill them or you could kill them the slow way by making them suffer. You have all the cards and they have nothing. You'll always have seven cards in hand. Uh, all right, next, let's look at... Do we get something from Slade? Blink Moth Infusion. The Infusion, you say? This is 14 mana. Blue, blue, 12 and generic. Affinity for artifacts. Untap all artifacts. I can't remember. We had this discussion last time. Like, is this good or is this bad? It's like, it's, I think it's like a win more type of card. Um, if you have a lot of artifacts out, you're probably already winning. It's probably some other card that you can use to untap all your stuff. Maybe not. Power be begets power. The pro card, probably good. Probably worth it. Next super chat, we've got, um, Alpha Nerd with Ancient Silver Dragon. A blue, blue, six generic, eight, eight flyer. And uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, roll a d20, draw cards equal to the result. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. That's a lot of cards. Like, what are you gonna do with 19 cards? You actually have to draw those cards. There might be some situation with your ancient silver dragon you don't even wanna attack with it anymore because you already drew like a bazillion cards off the damn thing. So, uh, I yeah, definitely worth it. If they, if they, we're just learning blue gets all the good stuff around here. I could make a commander deck out of just this show. It's just all the best blue chunky cards. Oh, Palancron? Oh, Palancron's amazing. Isn't that banned in some places? 
No, I thought I thought this was. Uh, oh, no, I was thinking of the maybe the five mana one. Five mana one might be a problem. Seven mana, four or five flyer enters the battlefield untapped, up to seven lands. Pay four, return Palancron to its owner's hand. Great card. Uh, you can go infinite mana if you uh, have high tide or some means of doubling your mana with your uh, lands. So if your lands at tap to add more than one mana, you go infinite with Palancron because you keep returning it back to your hand. Redeploy it. Uh, you untap your lands and you net mana and you just go wild. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, Pacers fan forever with Nexus of Fate. This card was such a problem. There's so, so much evil. Take an extra turn after this one at instant speed. They thought seven mana time walk was fine. If it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, everywhere, and sorry, anywhere, reveal Nexus of Fate and shuffle it to its owner's library instead. Why did it do that? Why didn't they just exile it? I think they clearly knew it was a problem, but why put it back in the deck? I guess it was for the commander players. Yeah, you can have your Nexus, you can have another Nexus of Fate. We'll just let, you know, it feels good to shuffle it back in there. This card, supremely broken. And it's probably worth it at 9 mana, for crying out loud. Super worth it. Alright, Cosmic Seeds, Polar Kraken. It's reserve list. Okay, we, okay, get this what? Get this. 11 mana. For an 11-11. So it's on brand. Trample. Polar Kraken comes into play tapped. Because, hey, for 11 mana, that's strong. That can't come into play untapped. Cumulative of upkeep. Sacrifice the land. This absolute garbage. This is terrible. It was big. Really big. It was big. Really. Really big. No. Bigger than that. It was big. Huh. Arna, Ker, Ker, Sky Knight, whatever. Uh, I mean, Polar Bear for scale, it was pretty big. For some reason, it also came into play tapped. Also doesn't have Island Walk for some damn reason. This, uh, this card killed Tarkir, literally. Oh, I'm not familiar with the lore. The big Polar Kraken came in. Uh, we did Rowdy Research. Some, uh, Amu Gaba. It's a seven mana six six illusion with flying. A blue two generic discard a card from your hand. Return Amu Gaba back to its owner's hand. I would not play it. Seven mana. Just so I can bounce it back to my hand doesn't feel worth it. Uh, next super chat. Dizzy Blizzy. Need proof. Pyroblast cannot target Memnarch. Yeah, exactly. Pyroblast will not target or hold on. Wait, whoa, whoa, Pyro. There's two of them. Pyroblast. Uh, no way. Hey, wait a minute. Destroy target permanent if it's if it's blue. No, 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 no. Pyroblast can target Memnarch. It it can't. It just won't destroy it yet unless they activate Memnarch. What are you trying to do? Whose side are you on here, Dizzy Blizzy? Whose side are you on? All right. I'll gift your super chat to somebody else. But before that, we got to thank our sponsors today. FusionGamingOnline.com. Deal of the week this week. Uh, save 15% off all the secret lair box sets. Is there a secret lair art that you've always wanted? Check the inventory of FusionGamingOnline.com. They might have it for you. You can get 15% off. Just in case you missed out on that deal when they had the secret layer drop. Uh, also, don't forget, Wilds of Eldraine has just arrived. And if there are any hot singles or sealed product you need from them, get them from there first. Because, hey, they sponsor the show. I love FusionGamingOnline.com. I went to their open. I also won it, which sort of looks suspicious. And don't worry, you... Uh Forget how suspicious me winning their tournaments are. Uh, you can get 5% off all their, you know their products using coupon code Nikachu at checkout. That wasn't uh, so smooth, but it's not too, hopefully not too suspicious. We're also going to thank uh, our other sponsor, Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online so you can play all the format. Whoops. All the, th where am I? Boom. There we go. All the, <laughs> still getting over my cold people. 
play any format you want, any deck you want, any time you want when you're renting cards on Magic Online with Mana Traders, all right? I've been doing it for years. I've been experimenting with Merfolk, all different types of variations because I can rent the cards with Mana Traders. In the past, if I wanted to experiment, it always cost me like 20 bucks buying and selling to the bots. It was terrible. And you can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore 9NM. Okay, let's get back to let's get back to the show. Pyroblast, I believe, can target a Memnarch. Uh, okay, so we're gonna donate the Dizzy Blizzy super chat to Turiot. My pet card, Scourge of the Fleets. Scourge of the, f oh sorry, Scourge of Fleets. Okay, blue, blue, five generic for a six, six. Uh, it's Kraken. When Scourge of the Fleets enters the battlefield, return each creature your opponents control with toughness X or less to its owner's hand, where X is the number of islands you control. That's worth it. It's basically like Cyclonic Rift. And you get to keep a creature on the board. I like it a lot. Number of islands you control, just make sure you have a lot of islands. The only downside is you do have a, have a you do have to have a lot of islands, so it's like a deck building disaster. So you know you, you have like less like um uh, less utility lands, alright? No ancient tomb or anything like that. Alright, next super chat we've got Miss Nisbet. Thank you so much. Nick, you always have Appreciated your mono blue content. Oh, you're welcome. I'm gonna keep it up. My vote is archetype of imagination. This doesn't even sound like a magic card. It is. It's six mana though. Mm. Sorry, uh, Mrs. Nisbet, but we'll donate your chat. Uh, I'll donate your super chat to someone new who is who has not gotten any lone wolf. The Magic Mirror. Today's show, only seven mana plus. You know how we do it on the show. We absorb the super chats. If they don't conform to the show's whatever. Apparently this was also Mark Zilla's choice. Blue, 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 six generic for legendary artifact. This spell costs one less to cast for each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. So it's not, it's not actually going to be like nine mana. You have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on Magic Mirror. Then draw a card for each knowledge counter on Magic Mirror. At the beginning of your upkeep. This feels like... This is going to take a long time to get a good investment out of this card. So the game has to go on for a very long time. Okay, so I will say... It will only be worth it in like the most casual of casual environments because like you're dead by the time this you're gonna get anything out of this like i think it's reasonable that you'll get this out turn five six like it's gonna cost or i don't know maybe maybe turn four if you're like really crazy with instants or sorceries but like that's that's about it um and then by then like you draw one card then you draw two then you draw three like once you start drawing through i think that's pretty busted but that's a lot of that's a lot of turns you gotta wait for I guess this plus time walks might change things, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is really strong in a time walk deck. Two turns after, one extra card. Yeah, some, something like that. Exactly. It Take, takes a while to get that investment. You can use rituals. You can use rituals for anything. Why does blue have rituals? Well, that's beside the point. I mean, you can have it in like a blue, red, blue, black deck. All right, next up, Platonic Liquid, Marja, or Mar Marjan. Don't overfeed your Dan Dan. So this is like a big Dan, oh, it is a big Dan Dan. This is Dan Dan that's eaten everything in the ocean. The fish keep getting bigger as they eat more sea creatures. Blue, blue, five generic for an 8-8 Leviathan. Marjan doesn't untap during your untap step. Marjan can't attack unless defending player controls an island. When you control no islands, you gotta sacrifice your Marjan. Blue blue sack a creature. Untap Marjan. Plays ability only during your upkeep. Blue blue. 
Marjan gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn and deals one damage to our attacking creature without flying. This card's stone cold terrible. It's, okay, so they're making up for... Wizards is making up for lost ground. Back then, their big, expensive blue creatures were stone cold unplayable. They, they just... It's like, hey, for seven, eight, nine mana, here's a, this big pile of crap that actually doesn't do anything unless you sack your whole board to make, make it do something. What are we doing here? We're p paying blue, blue to give it minus one, minus zero until end of turn, and it deals one damage to our attacking creature without flying. Only to, and it has to be attacking. Pathetic. Would never play the damn thing. You never said it had to be expensive and good. No, I didn't. No, no, you could you can name a bunch of garbage cards. We're learning if they're worth it or not. This one not worth it. Uh, hold on. Uh, I wanted Emil's. You guys are spitting so many cards out. You guys are doing great. Okay, Emil, temporal, uh, temporal trespass, classic blue cheats. Blue, 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 a generic delve. Take an extra turn after this one. Exile, temporal trespass. Busted. It's just the three mana, take an extra turn, basically. Delve is basically worthless. You're going to fill your graveyard. Either you're going to fill your graveyard or your opponent's going to fill your graveyard. Either way, worth it. Easy worth it. We didn't enter the infinite. The scornful egotist. What is this sorcery? It's eight mana for basically a generic 1-1. One, one. I was once human, now I'm far more. Yeah, in your mind. Genius in their own mind. Trunic! Dig Through Time was my favorite back in Tarkir. You should have been happy. This card was a lot slower to get banned compared to Treasure Cruise. Blue, blue, six generic instant. Delve! Another of the... They, you know, if they made Delve fair, it should have been like blue, 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 and then like Delve of three or something. Or the Delve had to be, or they, they should have made it 12 mana with the with Delve. Look at the top seven cards. Seven cards, people, of your library. Put two of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Very worth it. A little too worth it. For all your commander players, you realize how banned this card is? It's like banned in modern, banned in legacy, restricted in vintage. Sure, it's like fine to do whatever you want in like commander, but like that card is hard. It's crazy banned. What's with this Grazeth card? We looked at that one already. It's a funny one. Yeah, we did Gra we did Grazeth. People are so excited for Grazeth. Okay, Pacers fan forever with Treasure Cruise. Uh also, uh even more banned! Here, here we go. Here's a card even more banned than Dig Through Time. This one's banned in Popper too. Well, because Dig Through Time was a was a rare. If that was if, if Dig Through Time was a common, it would also get banned in Popper. Blue Seven Generic, uh, Delve, draw three cards. It was literally Ancestral Recall. What a time to be alive! If you ever wanted to feel like you were playing with Ancestral Recall in actual like modern or standard. Or anything. I mean, I guess you still can. You can play. It's it's legal in Pioneer for for some dumb reason. So it's legal in Pioneer. So if you still want to feel like you could play Ancestral Recall, just like in 1993, go play some Pioneer. Treasure Cruise is waiting for you there. Enjoy it while it lasts. And it will it will get banned one day. I don't know when. I don't care if the fetch lines are banned. Don't care. That this thing's this thing's going in the way of the dodo eventually. Um. Steve Cooper, what are you up to? Did you get a suggestion in? I don't see you. Did we do Decree of Silence? I don't know. Is that the draw the game card? It is the draw the game card. Blue, blue, six generic. Uh, whenever opponent plays a spell, counter that spell. Put a depletion counter on it. If there are three or more depletion counters on it, sacrifice it. Cycle it for six mana. Whenever you cycle to create a silence, you may counter target spell. Oh no, this I this I thought this was the uh thought I was thinking of something else. So while it's in play, you counter things, and then eventually you have to sack it. You could cycle it and counter it. I don't know, I don't like it. I don't like I don't know, maybe it's good, but I don't like it. Did we do time stretch? Yeah, we did time stretch already. 
You wasted your moment, Steve. I was waiting for you. That was Solemnity? Oh, yeah. It's a combo. Okay. It's a bit of a combo. You get the combo online. You're good. Yeah. Roaring Metal Man with uh, Shattered Seraph. Gold card! Gold card's only reserved for the Super Chatters, which I should get back to. Steven! What do you got for us, Steven? I have the Storm. Also, Dizzy Blizzy also doing I have the Storm. It's okay there. Uh, two Super Chatters want the Eye of the Storm in here. Blue, blue, five generic enchantment. Uh, whenever a player plays an instant or sorcery card, remove it from the game. Then that player copies each instant or sorcery card removed from the game with Eye of the Storm. For each copy, uh, the player may play the copy without paying its mana cost. Is there... Okay. Is there any strategic purpose to this? Or are you just trying to F with the game? Like, see, this card doesn't look like it does anything. So whenever someone plays an instant, like, it goes to Oblivion, and then you get a copy of all the other cards that went to the Oblivion. It literally looks like it does nothing. But I could be wrong. Like, does this have any, like, combo with some other card? Because, like, otherwise, I think this is just a mess around with the game card. Not worth it. It combos with Dranith? You mean the Magistrate? Your opponent can cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Okay, maybe. Copies all spells previous, uh, all pre all the previous spells in addition to the new one. You get a shitload of spell copies. Yeah, but everyone gets it. Like everyone gets access to the pool. This is a huge communism card. It's not your spells. It's our spells. And it's every it's everybody's spells around here. Why play blue if you're not going to mess around with the game? I find... I guess blue is a mess around with the game color. I guess that's it's that's somewhat in their identity. It's not in my, in, in my identity. <laughs> there are two types of blue players. One that tries to win the game and the other one who tries not to. I guess the, there, there are those two types of blue players. Uh, anyway, I, I'm going to still say not worth it. This is non this is a complete nonsense card. Uh Okay, I have storm, you play extra turn spell, then a bunch of small casting cost spells. Anyway, I don't get it. Chan Fred, Elder Spawn or Deep Spawn? I don't think we've got either spawn. El the Elder Spawn. Ho ho ho! This is old! Seven mana six six. Frankly, if there's no downside to this, that's not bad for its time. Elder Spawn cannot be blocked by red creatures. That's all upside, baby! Uh, sacrifice one of your islands during your upkeep, or Elder Spawn deals six damage to you and is buried. Okay. You see, like, they, they all... Was this on the... It's also on the reserve list! It's a reserve list card. Complete trash. Don't worry, I was never going to approve it anyway. Uh, okay, we got Mario. Mario, what do you got for us? Uh, one with the multiverse. Blue, blue, six generic for an enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. That's great. I love looking at the top of my library. Legally. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. Legally. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. That is insane. Okay, now that that is very... In First, you got my cure. Uh, what is the saying? First, you got my curiosity. Now, you have my attention. Or is it the other way around? You first got my attention. Now, you have my curiosity. Uh, anyway, this card uh, actually does look good. You can play land. You can play lands and cast spells from the top of my library. The land part is good. The biggest problem with these types of cards, uh, like look at the top of your library and play cards, is like when there's a land, you're just bricked. You suck. Um, it's awful. But this is really. But the fact that you can play lands makes it really good. Definitely worth it. 
will spiral out of control from there. Legally. It will legally spiral out, spiral out of control. Big blue pre-modern creatures have the best worst drawbacks. <laughs> you won't believe how bad the drawbacks to these cards are. Crow Card Games! Welcome! Sphinx of the Second Sun. So many second sun cards. How many suns can a planet have? Blue, blue, six generic for a six, six sphinx. Flying at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you get an additional beginning phase after this phase. How many times you mentioned phase? At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, so the second main phase, you get an additional beginning phase. What the hell is a beginning phase? The beginning phase includes the upkeep, the uh, sorry, untap, upkeep, and draw steps. Oh! So we get double upkeeps, double untaps? Well, that's busted! Like, that's the most important thing. And you gotta draw it. You, like, those are the most important steps of the game. The upkeeps for the triggers, the untap for, like, extra mana and extra attacks, and also uh, the extra draw. That's, like, everything you could possibly want. The back half of the turn is worthless. It's the front half of the turn that's everything. I think this card is great for 8 mana. Okay, G D -W G -W -J, trying to get in Talarian Terror on here. Talarian Terror. Oh yeah, this is a really good card in pop right now. Blue 6 generic for a 5-5. Five, five. Cost 1 less to cast for each instant or sorcery in your car card in your graveyard. So it can cost 1. It's a 1 math 5-5 five, five. with Ward 2, by the way. So it's like strictly... This is strictly better Gurmog Angler, isn't it? Like, Gurmog Angler is the same thing. Oh, no, it's not the same thing. I mean, in some ways, it could be better. So, uh, Gurmog Angler is fed by lands. It's got Delve. This one, just instants and sorceries. So you get to keep the graveyard. You get to keep your graveyard. Uh, and uh, get a 5-5 Ward 2 out. Actually, really, really good card. Definitely worth it. Yeah, Angler Delves lands. But this won't delve your graveyard away, just in case you need it. No extra... No extra main or combat, though. Whatever. I, I will live without the extra combat. You, you just... You get extra everything else. Alright, time to crank through the super chats. Oh yeah, Dizzy Blizzy gave one that was already mentioned. Eye of the Storm. Okay, we'll donate that one to the... Uh, the freebie section! Okay, Johnny W for life. Did anyone, did anyone say Blink Moth Infusion? I think we did. Yeah, we did this one. Uh, how about... Will we have an alchemy card today? I don't know. You wasted your shot, Toilet Duck, on that quest. You wasted it. You only get so many chances. Okay, Unstoppable Rob. Ice Breaker Kraken. Fortunately for Toilet Duck, Toilet Duck's here like every day, so no big deal. Okay, blue, blue, 10 generic for an 8-8 eight, eight Kraken. The spell costs one less to cast for each snow land you control. It could end up costing like two. Enter the battlefield. Artifacts and creatures target opponent controls do not, don't untap during their controllers, uh, during that player's next untap step. Return three snow lands you control to their owner's hand. Return Icebreaker, Icebreaker Kraken to its owner's hand. This card might be a little bit better if it had Flash, or maybe if it had Flash, it'd just be broken, but, uh, yeah, I think this is, this card actually looks pretty decent. I like this card. I like it. It's actually, it looks like, it looks like it should see more play. I feel like I should have heard about this card a little bit more since, since now. Super Fast Taurus says, Nikachu is awesome. I am awesome. Thank you so much for Super Fast Taurus. We saw some tortoises on the show already. All right, King Ginger. What do you got? A Sphinx of the Second Sun. We did that one. So for that, we donate it back to chat. Let's give it to, uh... Oh, not to Bay. Denying Wind. From Bulky. Blue, blue, seven generic sorcery. Search target player's library for up to seven cards, removing them from the game. Then that player shuffles his or her library. I think these cards are crap. 
by turn, like, I don't know when you're casting this card, by the time you cast it, like, if you were up against a combo deck, they would have comboed against you. You're dead already. Like, you're already dead. It, you are just spiting their best win conditions at this point. You're like, you're, you're not even doing this for strategic importance. You're just making them feel bad for, like, removing all the cards that they just bought that evening. Oh, you're not going to play with this card this game. Oh, no, that, not that card either. Nope, that one's going straight into exile. How to, uh, peeve off your friends with one card. That's, this is, def this is definitely, this is like a feel-bad card. Top 10 feel-bad cards in, in Commander. Uh, next, Super Chat, Dr. Caviar. You want to go with the OG Leviathan from the dark? Levi Levi uh, Leviathan. Uh, Leviathan. Then, the first, he said from the dark, we'll even look at the dark, look at the dark's text. Okay, we got a blue, 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 five generic, 10, 10, Leviathan, with trample. Okay, it's got trample. It's got something going for it. Uh, Leviathan comes into play tapped, because of all the big creatures back then did so. It was too broken if they came, came into play untapped. And does not untap as normal during your untap phase. Sacrifice two islands during your upkeep phase to untap your Leviathan. Leviathan may not attack unless you sacrifice two more islands. So you basically need eight islands to to smack your opponent to death. And very likely you're a blue player, so you haven't done a lot of damage to them. So they could actually block with like a 1-1. One, one. Uh, take 19 damage. And then you have not you have no lands left in play. They gave a blue creature trample, it's broken! Let's be, let's be serious. This card's garbage. Absolute trash. Uh, what is this one? Joe Yu. Chief Commander. Oh, it's, it literally says he's the Chief Commander. Blue, blue, five generic for an 8-8. Eight, eight. Joe Yu can't attack unless your opponent has an island in play. <laughs> ah, what a garbage. All right, next super chat. We got. Uh... I'm late today. Tidespout tyrants. That's a good one. Come on, I think I used that super chat too many times. I'll give you this one. Okay, Tidespout tyrant. Blue. What isn't it? There an original one? Yeah, this is the OG. They made a battle bond one. Whatever. Blue, blue, blue. Five generic for a five-five flyer. Whenever you play a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. That, that, I mean, this is insane. This, this is broken. It's on the battlefield. Now you just have to play spells and you play instants. You play brainstorm. You play ponder. You play creatures. You play artifacts. Uh, I'll bounce that. I'll bounce that. I'll bounce that. It all goes back to your hand. It's an absolutely disgusting card. Very worth it. I, I get the sense, like, for these blue cards, they should have started at 10 or something. 10 mana. Or they need to make way stronger cards for, like, red, white, green, and black at, like, 8 mana. Like, everything's pretty underwhelming. So it's a weaker hole breaker. Uh, is it called hole breaker or hole breacher? Oh, you, no, oh, you mean, uh, hole, no, you, you meant hole breaker. Hole breaker horror. Blue, blue, five generic for a 7, 8. Kraken or with flash and it can't be countered uh, whenever you cast a spell choose up to one return target spell You don't control to its owner's hand return target non land permit to its owner's hand. You're right actually Well, and it's return target not what was this one. This was You could bounce Lands with this but essentially you don't need to yeah whole break horror is strictly better I remember in cube. Uh, I just draft this thing. It's my only win condition and it wins by itself it's actually just disgusting. Disgustingly powerful. Definitely worth it. And King Ginger has another one. Quicksilver Gargar? What is it? Quick. Silver. Gargantuan? Okay, blue, blue, five generic for a 7 7 shapeshifter. You may have Quicksilver Gargantuan. Enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature. 
on the battlefield, except it's a, still a 7 7. This is the crappiest clone I've ever seen. All caps! Omniscience! We did omniscience already. So we will donate your super chats to the freebie section. Uh, what do you guys got for us here? Clone Legion. Blue, blue, seven generic, so nine mana. Uh, sorcery for each creature target player controls create a token that's a copy of that creature. That seems pretty good. You got a you got an army? Well, I have an equal army. My army is just as good as your army. Build a clone army around here. Around here. I'd say something clever from uh, Star Wars Episode Two, but I I actually don't know the movie well enough to uh, pull a quote out of my ass at the moment. Well, Steve Cooper has something. To say. Steve Cooper wants to say something. All right, uh, Aminato's Augury. Whatever the hell that is. This is a blue, blue, six generic sorcery. Exile the top eight cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield. One land? Until end of turn for each non land card type, you may cast a spell of that type from among the exiled cards without paying their mana cost. Okay, hold on. I exile eight cards, I put a land, and then I can play a non land card. So if I have Artifact Creature, Instant Sorcery, Planeswalker, I get to just put it onto the battlefield. Definitely worth it. You gotta be building your deck around this card, though. Trip says, it's cool, you can clone your army of, or your opponents. Can you clone. Oh, can you clone your own army? For each creature, target player control. Oh, you can double your army! The only downside is if you have a lot of legendary creatures, you'll screw yourself over. Alright, next super chat. Uh, from... Again, from King Jun... You just... Coming out hot here! Deep Sea Kraken. Doesn't look that deep around here. Blue, 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 seven generic for a six, six. Can't be blocked. It's got suspend. Blue and two generic. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if deep sea kraken is suspended, remove a time counter from it. This is terrible. That takes forever. I mean, it it's going to be forever to get this card and play either way. Pacers fan forever. Clone Legion. Oh, you got, uh... Did you get snipe by, or was this this come from another person? We have two clone legions. Oh, this show is gonna go longer. Hold on. Okay, we are prepared. All right, this was already chosen, so we're gonna go to we're donating the super chat to Brett Myojin, Myojin of Seeing Winds. This Myojin has seen things beyond the wind. Blue, 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 seven generic for a 3-3 spirit. Comes into play with a divinity counter on it if you played it from your hand. Uh, Myojin of seeing winds is indestructible as long as it has a divinity counter on it. Remove a divinity counter from Myojin of seeing winds. Draw a card for each permanent you control. So, ah, eh, it's not, it's not bad. Hold on, I think the indestructible part doesn't matter. Remove it if any counter, draw a card for each permit you control, so it's 10 mana. So essentially it's just this super expensive card draw spell, if I understand this thing correctly. I don't know if it's worth it. It's a lot of cards, but you could, you could just pay like, you could just have like one of those, like uh, any sort of stroke of genius like card. You know what? I don't like it. Not worth it. No max hand size increase though. Exactly. There's a lot of other cards that maximize your hand size. I don't think it's worth it. Also not easy to play in commander. Just can't even play it as your commander. Uh, Platonic liquid. Can't believe no one did Visidrix yet. <laughs> Card Stone Cold Garbage. Josh Karen, what do you got for us? It is, I know it's six, not seven cost. 
Uh, just love the card. Forced fruition. Disqualified. <laughs> we'll donate your super chat, though. Uh, we'll give it to Henrik Merktide. Wow, surprised that's taken that long. This card, it's, it's just literally a two mana, like, 7-7 seven, seven flyer, usually. It's got Delve. Delve is the number, it's probably one of the more broken mechanics. It's got Flying, enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each instant or sorcery card exiled with it. But here's the deal. When it's on the battlefield, whenever an instant or sorcery card leaves your graveyard, uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on Murktide Regent. So as you delve more spells away, this card can get bigger. This could be like a 2020 in the end. Can outmatch Levi. Uh, can out. It could get bigger than Merit Lage. That's what I'm trying to say. Which is better, Vizzy or Joe? I have no idea. Oh, uh, I'll take... Oh, you're talking about, like, your commander guy? Uh, Joe the commander? I'll say Joe. I think. No, hold on. Maybe Vizzy. Because Joe can't attack unless you have an island, right? <laughs> Which is just crazy pathetic. Crowcore Games! Alright, it's like Super Chats Anonymous for the rest of the show now. Denying Wind. For Bulky, who said it first. All right, look it out for Bulky. Uh, did we do this one? Okay, blue, blue, seven generic. Target player's library. Search target player's library for up to seven cards. Yeah, remove from the game. We did this one. Or did I get this from Bulky and then you super chatted after the fact? All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna give one to the to the we're gonna to, I snipe <laughs> I snipe myself. That's a first. Okay, we'll donate the super chat though. Um, Cyclone Summoner. Bulky sniped himself by accident. Okay, blue, blue, five generic for a seven, seven giant wizard. When Cyclone Summoner enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, return all permits to the owner's hand, except the giants, the wizards, and and lands. If you cast from your hand, return all permanents. Oh, I see. That is so weird. So if you, I guess you build it into the, the right wizards or giant deck. This is this card's great. I think bouncing anything that will bounce everything except your stuff is just gravy. I mean, that's why Cyclonic Rift is what it is, right? And this guy's a wizard. And, and a giant, by the way. And a 7-7 seven, seven creature. Uh, all right, next what we got. We got Mulk, 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 Hullbreaker Horror. If it sticks, game over. Yeah, we did that one, though, unfortunately. Sorry, you got you got a little snipe down down there. Do you have another one, Mulky? If not, I'll just donate to the uh, community. Give it to Toilet Duck. Sapphire Dragon. Okay, what the hell is this? Seven mana for a five, six, flying... Whenever Sapphire Dragon attacks or blocks Scry 2. Eh, very meh. What's the what's the instant though? The adventure! For a blue two generic, we got Psionic Pulse. Carry target non-creature spell. It's okay! You know, it's not bad. So for three mana, you have some means of interacting with people, and then you get like just a random five, six flyer. You know, it's okay. This is like I want I don't want to say it's garbage. Because it's not garbage. Yeah, mid. Very mid in there. I don't have a mid sound effect, though. Do I have a mid sound effect? I do have mid sound effect. I gotta, I'm gonna increase my soundboard. Mid sound, soundboard not big enough. Might be okay as like a one or two of in standard. Well, it's always gonna be one of in your hand in uh, commander. All right, King Ginger. Now what do you got for us? Blatant Thievery. Uh, always worth it. Seven mana. For each opponent, gain control of target permanent. That player controls. I'll leave subtlety to the rich. Little did they know, that, little did they realize that subtlety would actually be another card. Print into the game later. Kios Gaming! Hi, Nikachu. Enter the infinite. Oh, we did that one, unfortunately. 
You're the lights of the show, Chaos Gaming. So we will donate the super chat to the crowd. We'll. Henrik is just Henrik is just spitting out stuff, hoping that super chats are gonna miss. Or maybe he's looking at the uh, super chats like, oh, that one's already been done before. Okay, we go. We have a blue, another adventure dragon. Blue, blue, five generic for a six, six. Okay, sword, co serpent can't be blocked as long as you've cast a non creature spell this turn. That's not bad. That's good stuff. Okay, you just cast like just some random cantrip or like an artifact, mana ramp, anything. Then we got capsizing wave for a blue, one generic. Return target creature to its owner's hand. This card's great. This is less than mid. Like, this is unblockable damage. Unblockable is very good. It's very good evasion, in my opinion. Okay, Kios Gaming has a second card to redeem themselves. We've got the uh, Eternal Domination. Oh, sorry. No, Eternal Dominion. Eternal Dominion. Blue, blue, blue. Seven generic. Search target. Oh, search target opponent's library for an artifact, creature, enchantment, or land card. Put the card into play under your control. What card? Oh, you only get to look for one. That Then that player shuffles his or her library, and you have epic, so you can keep using it. That sounds like a real pain to resolve. Keep searching players' libraries and also making them shuffle their library. Sounds like torture! For the rest of the game, you can't play the... But you can't play spells for the rest of the game. I don't know. I don't think it's worth it. It. I could be wrong. One. You, you, you get any card, though. It depends on the playgroup, maybe. It seems very, 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 very expensive to maybe do something. I just don't like that I can't play my cards anymore. Um... All right, next super chat we have Dr. Caviar with Palincron. Old MTG Millennial player reporting in. We did Palincron, which means we're going to donate it to the to the uh, freebie section. Agent of Treachery from Lauren Harris. The card that is mysteriously banned in Historic for no damn reason. Blue, blue, five generic for a 2-3 human rogue. Enter the battlefield. Gain control of target permanent. I don't care how if it's seven mana. I don't think it's worth it. At the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. Anyway, I... It's like... Anyway, I don't think this is worth it. King Judge is like, Age of Treachery is my favorite card ever. That's wild. This card's banned in Historic. Like, it's perfectly legal in Pioneer. If it's so broken, what is it doing in Pioneer? Is it, and it's legal in Explorer. Like, it's doing nothing. It was banned because of Winota. Yes, that's exactly the reason. It was banned because of Winota. Anyway, I think it's just a stupid card that it was... And now people just forgot about it. Look at this. This card's banned in Historic. Like, Historic is really broken. If they unbanned that card, it would do absolutely nothing. This was banned for the dumbest reason. It's because Wizards of the Coast doesn't even play their own formats. And I have no idea what data that they used to ban this card. It was just beyond stupid. Uh, next one, we got Nicholas, Day of the Dragons. That sounds like a cool card name. I like it. It's not a red card, I promise. There's a lot of dragons in blue. It's been a big it's been a big day for the Leviathans. It's been a big day for the serpents. It's also been a big day for the dragons. Blue 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 set four generic for an enchantment. When Day of the Dragons enters the battlefield, exile all uh, all creatures you control. Then you get that many five five red dragon creature tokens with flying. When Day of the Dragons leaves the battlefield, sack all the dragons you control, then return the exile cards to the battlefield to, under uh, under your control. Winner, you get your exiled cards back. It's like insurance versus a sweeper? Is that how I'm interpreting this? Seven mana to exchange. Okay, uh, okay, in the right deck, maybe it'll be worth it. Like if you put a bunch of garbage in play. But in general, I think you just want to have good cards in play and keep them there. I don't think this is worth it. 
It's like, this is only worth if you want to upgrade a lot of crappy creatures in play and turn into this. But then, like, you, there's no insurance policy there. I mean, I, there maybe I'm missing something on this card. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay, King Ginger. Uh, what do you got for us? Mnemonic Deluge. Mnemonic. This person looks like their soul is leaving their body. Blue, 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 six generic sorcery. Exile target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard or exile their soul. Copy that card three times. You may cast the copies without paying their mana cost. Exile mnemonic deluge. You get three copies of one card. So you could, you could for nine mana exile like a time walk. I guess that, that makes it worth it. Just, just the idea of exiling a time walk probably is just busted. Yeah, you can t exile an extra turn card. And then from that, I mean, past, present, and future surge through the wizard's mind, bringing a flood of possibilities. Just an hour ago, the new Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list got announced and it sucks. Fail MTG. Our ban list sucks too, so... We, 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 can't, <laughs> we can't be dancing around saying we're better. Pacers fan forever. Temporal mastery. My god, this is absolutely late. Uh, we did temporal mastery already. I'll donate that to the freebie section. All right, what do you got for us people? We got Kankusha with Traumocrasis. Oh, sorry, Traumocratus, right? Traumocratus, big Kraken. Blue, blue, five generic, eight, eight. Has hexproof unless it's attacking or blocking. Can't be blocked unless all creatures defending player controls block it. So you you block with if you block with one, you gotta block with all. Not worth it. I don't like that it doesn't have hexproof when I'm attacking. That's stupid. I'm a giant crab! Like come on. I don't understand the hexproof thing. It should just be indestructible. I, I gotta figure out what's the lore to like being a crab and having hexproof? What's up with that? That doesn't make any sense to me. You can't shoot a crab underwater or something. Dr. Magilus, uh, with Emergent Ultimatum. S sweat when this card is on the stack. I believe someone already super chatted that one. Emergent Ultim. Yeah, we did this. <laughs> so you can super chat gold cards. Yeah, someone did this really early in the show. Oh, hold on, we're not done. It's okay. We have a few more super chats to get through. So we'll donate this super chat to shells are antimatic. Oh, I guess that makes some sense. Hermit crabs go in their shells. I understand for the tur turtle makes sense to me. I don't understand the kraken though. Okay, you guys seem to be on the same page here. Octavia living thesis. Oh, this is a very pretty card. Okay, blue, blue, a generic for an 8 8 octopus. It's also an elemental. The spell costs 8 less to cast if you have 8 or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard. My brother would love this card. Card, 8 generic mana. 8 8. Costs 8 less. Ward 8. The, uh, if you have 8 or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, target creature has base power and toughness 8 8 until end of turn. When you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell. This card looks insane, actually. I think it's worth it. Very, very, very worth it. Like, you can't even kill these damn things. It's like better than, uh... I wouldn't say it's better than Hexproof, but it's pretty damn good. <laughs> Crow Card Games like, this has killed me so many times. This is a great card. Three bucks. Actually, sorry, no, it's one dollar. There's a version with for one buck out there. Scornful egotist from what a uh, wire able sheep. Well, guess what? We did that one actually. You're not the first one on the block to troll me with the scornful egotist. So we're gonna give it to Matt with the ether tide whale. The blue blue four generic six four flying enters the battlefield. Get six energy. Pay four. Return ether tide whale to its owner's hand. Absolute trash. Don't play that card. 
And that's it for today's show. What an amazing show. People are very, very passionate about their, uh, their super expensive blue cards. And if you're passionate about Magic the Gathering, you want to be part of the show, you got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be there or be square. We're also going to thank everyone who supports the show, the morning show every morning. If you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show, I really appreciate it. I'm here every morning. Everyone else is here in the morning. And also the people who super chat to let other people to contribute to the show, people who donate the super chats. Thank you so much. And we got to thank the people who make the show every morning are the people who are here in the morning. People like Abzo, Kankusha, King Ginger, Johnny W4 at Life, Crocore Games, Dizzy, Blizzy, Kiosk Gaming, Steve Cooper, Henrik, Christopher B, Mr. Deadhead, Lord Trevor. Because without all you guys, I'd have no show. So as, keep, as usual, keep bringing up them coffees, coffee crew, and we're going to keep up brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.